course, if you're just tuning in right now, this is the touchline on Y254. My name is Max Olwasika. Very good afternoon and welcome back to the program. Remember talking to us, double two, one, six, two, starting with the word touch and also interact with us via social media handles at Wasike Maxwell at Y254 channel, hashtag touchline Y254. We delve straight into state of rugby in the country and joining me on set are two guys who form an integral part as far as rugby is concerned. They have been quite involved in trying to make sure that rugby gets to another level in terms of its progress, growth and development. Malim Kombo has been here <coughs> before chair yeah, Combras sure. Rugby Football Club. Malim, good to have you on board. Happy New Year. Have you been? Happy New Year. I've been good. Now I'm back now to <laughs> the rugby scene now again. Good it's a to new see year you. for 2019. And, and I know the rugby boys. One man who's been also doing <laughs> exceptionally well with this podcasting, Arwa Kamuya, Sports Bandit at Three Quarters Podcast. How are you doing, bro? And what's up, man? Thank you very much for having me. I'm very well. Uh, looking forward to 2019. Great. Yeah. And straight into <coughs> the latest information from Kenya Rugby Union, yeah. Sylvia Kamau has been confirmed the uh, CEO of Kenya Rugby Union after serving in acting capacity. What do you make of that particular development? Good for the game? Yeah, you know, Sylvia has been uh, in rugby. She was at Strathmore and uh, you find that Strathmore did so well under the tutelage of uh, Michio Chola. And uh, she was actually the one behind uh, the selection, the recruitment of the players and also got involved and also made the university to accept the game at uh, Strathmore. And so coming into KRU, something good, also elected by the, the, the delegates, the affiliates. The delegate team was uh, one of the delegates, a board member of uh, Kenya Rugby Union. So being now confirmed, that's, uh, that's something uh, positive and we hope things will be able to change. And uh, it was unfortunate that uh, Bokusi just left. He is a great man also. Uh, being the CEO for Kenya Rugby for some time and when he resigned now they had now to ask Sylvia to step in and to find that uh, he was able to complete the season last year to complete the year and now being confirmed at the beginning of 2019 I think it's something positive <coughs> looking forward uh, for something good for Kenya Rugby Ngaro, uh, yeah. Sylvia Kamau coming on board during this particular time when rugby is not doing very well in the country, replacing Ronald Bukusu, who resigned uh, without citing a proper reason. What do you make of her appointment? Do you think she will take rugby to another level considering these turbulent times at Kenya Rugby Union? Um, there's no dispute that uh, the work that Sylvia did at Strathmore was, you know, above par. Um, but there are questions as to what she did when she came into the union. Yes, she did come in as a director and she replaced Ronald Bukusi as a CEO, as the acting CEO. Um, I saw a quote uh, talking about her confirmation as a CEO and they were saying that um, she has had a successful stint as the interim uh, CEO and they were talking about um, the fact that she led a successful Safari 7 tournament and the rapid charge qualification for the 15th team. Uh, I don't know if the definition of success has changed uh, in the dictionary because uh, we both know those two campaigns were disasters. So I don't know uh, exactly on what basis she's been confirmed. But the problem is at the CEO level at the union, there's too much politics right now. There's too much debt. And you can be coming in with the cleanest intentions. You can be coming in with the best intentions for the game. But there's too much politics happening at the Kenya Rugby Union for me to be confident as to whether Sylvia Kamau is going to be able to uh, perform at, uh, to the best as at her position as CEO. Do you think being given free hand at Kenya Rugby Union has been the main undoing of these people who've been, uh, you know, in leadership positions at Kenya Rugby Union, probably even in terms of sevens uh, leadership? Paul Murunga is now the coach after replacing Innocent Simiu. He's not started on a good note, of course, this small show for the national sevens team during the last leg of HSBC World Seven Series. What has been the main problem at the Ngong Road Based Federation? There are two things, if you ask me. Number one, uh, we have a crop of guys there who are visionless. They don't know um, exactly what they want for the game. And it leads me to my next point. The other thing is that people are there for their selfish interests. Not too many people are there looking uh, to the future of the game. Not too many people have a vision uh, to take the game to the next level. Because the truth and the fact of the matter is that for a country that attracted the likes of Mike Friday and Paul True to come coach the Sevens team, and Innocent Simiu has done a brilliant job. He did a brilliant job in the two years that he was a sevens coach. And then to get rid of him for baseless reasons. Granted, you might have 
some feeling as to how he handled the issue in Paris. But the truth and the fact of the matter is that Innocent Simi was delivering on the pitch. So you get rid of him for no reason whatsoever, or you use whatever flimsy reason you want to, you get, you want to get rid of him. And then it, it's, it's just a lot of selfish interests in the union, if you ask me currently. There's just a lot of selfish interests, and people are there for their own good, if you ask me. Malimu, yeah. I know you form an integral part as far as rugby in yeah, the sure. country is concerned. There are looming elections at the Kenya Rugby Union, of course, uh, the current uh, chairperson, uh, or rather president yeah. of Kenya Rugby Union. Yeah, uh, his term is almost coming to an end yeah. and uh, <coughs> elections are slated for, I think, one month from now as you speak. Yeah. Maybe in terms of who comes on board, what do you think the quality is and the leadership attributes he or she needs to have if rugby has to get to another level and we have to restore the lost glory of the sport? Yeah. So I, th I think it's uh, what's happening at the union now. It's uh, quite unfortunate uh, because we've seen the, the seventh team the way it is now. It's granddad. We having the senior players failing to travel to IRB uh, series uh, in Hamilton and Sydney, and uh, we only got four points. Uh, that's in Dubai. So uh, the guy who the, by four points, three points in Dubai and one point in uh, Cape Town. Uh, so one point in Dubai and three points in Cape Town. So unfortunate. So uh, the, the guy who comes up must now come and restore the dignity of the union. That's the first thing, and also be able now to also to pull back the sponsors because the the bond of condition within the players and uh, the, 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 the the chairman has been uh, the issue of uh, finance. This the way Mwela said. Okay, they, 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 we don't have sponsors at the current of the union who can be able to give the union money and they also can be able to pay the players uh, the dues they, 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 are, they are fighting for. They have not signed the contract. It's very unfortunate. We're going to the second part of the series and uh, the players have not signed the contract. Uh, it's when the other countries now, the players have so they sorted last year uh, the, their squad and the issue of the payment. But it's unfortunate that our country, we want to use this opportunity for qualification. The top four will qualify for Olympics in uh, in, in Tokyo next year. <laughs> we saw what happens in Ripachaj here. Uh, we, we are lucky to qualify for Rio, uh, unless uh, it was lucky for Mbachi to run 60 meters to go and make a drive for us to qualify. So it's hard. We lost to Zimbabwe. So the guys should be able to be able to to come up and uh, be able to pull people together. That's the first thing, and uh, also be, be to, to be able to uplift the game. Uh, Pull back, pull back the, the 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 good game of the game. Be able to improve the infrastructure. Be able to get the equipment for the, the clubs, and also be able to involve them in, uh, especially in courses. Uh, so can be able to, for so courses can be able to come up and uh, guys be able to put the right structures in place and uh, dev uh, dev have have a, dev a very nice development structure for the young guys to come up, and then we have a smooth path, and then just having few guys at the top surviving, but we don't have a good development structure. So we need a, that guy, a complete guy, who will be able to bring people together, have development structures, we can be able to also to be able to put the, 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 the national team in place. Look at the 20 team, we are we are hosting the under 20 uh, African uh, car here in uh, Kenya Rugby Union <laughs> in April. But see now, <coughs> the, 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 the players are already not in the camp. We have around 12 weeks now, but the players now, they are doing selection tomorrow. So we need someone who will be able also to uh, be able to do things on time so that uh, we can be able can be, guys can be able to play and also play able to play good rugby and also the country be able to win because these guys are playing the country so we don't expect who are putting on the national colors and then they are losing so in, in your own view how do you rate the <coughs> delivery of the current president of kenya rugby union richard omuela whose time is coming to an end and i don't think he will be standing for re-election yeah, <laughs> you know, you talk of Omuela, we talk of Omuela 1 and Omuela 2. Omuela, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. you know, Omuela, yeah, Omuela was there in 2003. Between, 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 yeah, replaced yeah, by then, between 2003 and 2011, yeah. he was replaced by Mwangi Mwangi, and then he came up. Yeah, and then after. again, now he came back. So, so it's Omuela 1. 1, Omuela 2 again, he came back. Actually, uh, during the 2003, he did a great job, but uh, the second phase, uh, well, he has tried because the sponsors now ran away because of the lost confidence and we also had guys who came up and resigned and um, the union was at uh, the union was at uh, lockheads and there was a lot of quarreling among the officials of the union which was bad for the game of rugby but uh, all in all i think he has tried as he go out uh, when we see the national team the way it performed it was number five it, uh, in previous years we hit 100 points we also had the team for the first time uh, the simba qualifying for the repair judge which was unheard for the previous years they qualified for france and uh, they were unlucky. The way 
saw it played, the game has uh, really improved. We saw the the, the, the the girls' team, the ladies' team, uh, winning card for the first time in in in, uh, in Gaborin. I think uh, the girls tried. Also, when you look at the under-20 team going up to the finals, uh, probably we can say as much as it was unlucky not for probably Kenya to qualify for World Cup, but uh, it's something that people can copy and also improve on it, the incoming chairman. Naro, let's talk about the schools <coughs> that have been called by uh, Paul Murunga, head of the s s next legs, that is uh, Hamilton and Sydney Sevens. So of course, heavyweights, big guns missing in action, the likes of William Baker, Collins, Injera, Andrew Monde, uh, Jeff Olwoch, Nelson Oyo, or Sami Olich. You know, plenty of big names uh, missing in action, and there has been outcry, especially on social media platforms from rugby lovers in the country, saying that, you know, the performance might be awful ahead of these two assignments. What do you think yourself? Um, you see, I, I, first, I must say that I actually do stand with the players in the decision that they've taken. Um, we need to realize one thing. The sport is professional. Yes. And I really detest this argument I normally hear in clubs, especially from the older generation, talking about in our days we were not paid. I don't like that argument. In my own opinion, it's pathetic because the truth and the fact of the matter is that in your days, your competitors were also not professional. In your days, your competitors also as, had other jobs, right? They were doubling up as rugby players. Yes, they had a bit of money because of the developed nature of the game in their countries and the developed stage of their countries, but they also had other jobs. They are not full-time pros. Now, these guys are competing with full-time pros. That guy does nothing that, but play rugby. And you expect these guys to put up a challenge with the money that you're playing them? Honestly, I mean, Maxwell, even in a Kawaida job, yes. Mualimu, even if, in a Kawaida job, if you get a pay cut, you're going to leave. <laughs> if you get a pay cut, you're going to leave. So why are we making noise about the fact that these guys have decided not to sign contracts because of the fact that they're getting a pay cut from 170,000 shillings to 45,000 shillings? Come on, I mean, that's more than half. Let's be honest with you. And, and, and what has upsets me about this particular situation is that we divert from what the actual issue is. The actual issue we should be asking is, why don't we have sponsors? The reason why corporate Kenya is not investing in Kenya Rugby Union is because our house is not in order. It's not anything else. It's not because they don't see the value of the game. They do see the value of the game. It's the fact that the house is not in order, number one. Number two, in 2018, for a union to solely depend on sponsorship is absurd. If you look world over, there are other ways to generate income. There's broadcasting rights. There's merchandising. How come this union has not focused on that? How is it that when a sponsor pulls out, all of a sudden you don't have money? All of a sudden you're going to the government to ask the government to plug in into where you guys have not performed. So it's, it's tough. But on the other hand, I also like the fact that there are young tax coming into the squad. So these guys get the exposure, the international exposure that's needed. We increase our pool of sevens players. In the event that we are able to rectify these issues and our stalwarts come back, the likes of Collins Njera, William Barker, all those guys get back into the team, then you have a large pool of sevens players because now the likes of Daniel Tabu, Mark Wandetto, all these guys now getting the international exposure. They're going to play in Hamilton, they're going to play in Sydney, they're going to play against top athletes. So it comes also, it helps with the experience. So it's a mixed situation. Yes, we feel bad because our stalwarts cannot go for this game or cannot go attend these legs, primarily because of um, what I think is the union's fault. But at the same time, it also helps in the fact that we are expanding our pool of players. So in as much as you agree that the, uh, the absence of the heavyweights will give a platform to these budding mm. athletes, uh, sportsmen to you know showcase mm. what they are capable of doing most, on an international platform against you know uh, prestigious teams that are well known for rugby what do you make of what do you assess of their capability to you know perform better and probably surpass the performance during the last two legs you know uh, for you to build a formidable team you have to fuse you have to fuse experience and young talent yes now, who's the experience on that team as we speak? Granted, Cyprian Kuto has been there a couple of legs. Mike Wanjala was there during the Mike Friday days. But you have two or three guys. Jacob Oje, I don't think he's actually gone for a sevens leg. He's a bit more of the 15th player. So you need to fuse experience and young blood. So the question I ask myself is, you lose the top guys 
and the injeras the ambakas they're not there to pass over the knowledge to the young guys this guy is it's baptism by fire if you ask me and in the last when 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 kenya has been successful in sevens it's never happened that guys have just been thrown in right when the victor pongs the innocent Mews were leaving i mean because Dema had been there for a while but then you you know you brought in eden aguero you brought in augustine lugonzo you brought in oscar yodi you know you brought in all those guys now those guys are not even there to pass over the baton to the new guys to the mark one to the daniel tabu so it's baptism by fire sometimes it's the best way to learn but my fear is that we perform so we end up performing so badly that Kenya loses its core status on the seventh circuit. Then it becomes a problem for Kenya. Your thoughts, Malimu? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's unfortunate uh, because um, the, the official had called the players and they told them about the situation at hand as per now. And they were told uh, if things improve, we'll be able to come back. But I feel the players could have understood. Because they understand the situation and how can we be correct? The sponsor is not there. The money is not there. Even Omuela said, "Where's the money, you guys? Bana? You, you go and play for the country." And uh, if we could have been players, because Omuela has been there, Injera has been there during the reign of Omuela. Uh, William William Buck has been there during the reign of Omuela, and Omuela had done a great job. They could have said, "Let us go and play for this guy and give him a good send off by again making it to to the cup quarters in uh, in 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 in, in, uh, in Hamilton for the second time in a row because last time they made it to the the cup quarters <coughs> after beating Canada, Samoa, then drawing with USA. Uh, and then they made, then they lost to Scotland at uh, the quarters. Uh, so I think they could have accepted and gone gone to play. But uh, it's unfortunate that uh, they didn't go. These guys who are coming up with, uh, with uh, William Reeve, um, Mark Wonder for making for the first time a trip to Hamilton, it, it won't be easy, it won't be tough. And then when you look at that particular pool, South Africa, it might go to 60, it will be a disaster. <laughs> uh, when you look at um, uh, France, uh, Scotland also, they are a bit physical, and the way you see Scotland playing, uh, the Kenyan team, get the players William on back had marched and uh, were playing well against them, and they had known how they play, their mode of play. So uh, with their physicality, this guy will not be probably with the, the defense might be a problem. And when I looked at the young guys playing in Dubai and South Africa, the major problem was on the defense. And uh, if the experienced players who are coming in to assist at that particular time, like Aden Nguero, Aden Aguero, uh, be assisting. So where are they now? Uh, it, it will be quite difficult for them to match that particular pool. So if we get another one point <laughs> again in Hamilton, Sydney, we get another one point, it would be a disaster. Four, uh, two legs, uh, six to go, and uh, we below 10 points. Uh, I think it, it won't be good for, for our team. And the young guys want to see, to keep on maintaining our status like uh, what Mara had said, so that uh, our rugby, uh, being be, uh, so, so that it motivates the other also guys and uh, we, we improve on our rugby game at the international level. This crisis has been witnessed before in <coughs> other sporting disciplines, even football, you know, uh, people talking how patriotism should come first. But, you know, yeah. uh, reciprocation in terms of putting a meal on the table. Do you think these players uh, are supposed just to don the jersey of the national team representing the country during international assignments for the sake of patriotism, yet they also have responsibilities and duties to play? The same way Ngaro said. Uh, yeah, okay, but you know, look at the edit at all. There's some mm. hidden information that uh, guys we are not being, we are, we, are, we are not saying it. When you appear, when that team appears at the national, maybe, a, maybe, maybe, the, maybe pressure <laughs> there, will fear. bear fruits because yeah. last time I remember uh, when they were playing, I think in Paris yeah. sevens, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. without their allowance, their salaries and dues having uh, not been paid, yeah. and uh, you know, some of them even refused to put on. <laughs> Uh, brand Kenya. They yeah. blacked out their brand Kenya. Yes, yeah. they blacked it out. Yeah. And you know, later on, ultimately, we saw the concerns, grievances being addressed. So maybe yeah, sure. this pressure can bear fruit. <coughs> Yeah, okay, but at the end of the day, the way the Kenya rugby is, there's nothing forthcoming as per now. From the government, but, uh, but, No, yeah, let, let but, you, yeah, but you the, see. the issue is, uh, okay, when you look at uh, the, the issue, there's, there's appearance fee, 30,000. These players will never come back free. There's 30,000 that will get in Hamilton, 30,000. So uh, a player will be able to come back probably with 100,000 for the two legs. So, but they want, apart from that allowance, they want to appearing also on the contract. You see, Which, yes, look, yeah. uh, that's where I disagree because... <laughs> guys are talking about patriotism we especially in the last two three years in the uh post richard actually in the richard omola era the omola two yeah <laughs> these players have really suffered and we talk about the sevens the sevens guys are even at least the 15s guys have really suffered 
And these guys continue donning that jersey, as you're saying. These guys are patriotic. These guys do not, especially the sevens guys, they don't do anything else other than play rugby for their country. At the very least, we should be supplementing that. We should be paying them. And look, guys, let's not run away from the issue. The reason why corporate Kenya is not sponsoring rugby is because of the problems in rugby. It's because of the Kenya Rugby There's Union. There's no corporate confidence. Exactly. The reason why Sport Pesta left is because of the problems in the union. The reason why Safaricom left is because of the problems in the union. The reason why the government is not really backing rugby, despite rugby having had a very good relationship with the government. I might add that, I don't know if he is now, but at some point the president was the patron of Kenya Rugby was because of the confidence they had in the management of rugby then. Now they're not confident. There are stories, I don't know, it's alleged stories, and it's not confirmed, but it's alleged stories that last year, the government actually contributed 138 million shillings to the union. Where did we see it? Because Sport Pesa had pulled out. Where did we see it? And look, Maxwell, we need to move from this thing of government plugging in every time. Oh. In England, do you hear the government intervening? When guys don't have money, government just comes in for bonus. And it's a billion dollar industry in England. If you go to the US, sports is a billion dollar industry. Do you hear Trump interv intervening on, 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 on uh, issues to do with allowances and such things? Government's work is to set policy and legislation. Very many corporates, by the way, don't know the fact that if you sponsor sports, you get a t it's a deduction. That's law. If I give you 100 million shillings, I'm not going to get taxed on that 100 million shillings. Is the union using that to get corporates? So let's 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 not move away from the issue here. Yes, granted, these players are not being paid, and I think that had the chairman handled it better, Benjamin Aimba was actually on TV saying, had the chairman handled it better, these players would actually have done it. Because the truth and the fact of the matter is that this is not the first time that their, their salaries have been cut. It's actually happened before. The chairman should have handled it better. When the chairman goes ahead and says, you're never going to get selected for these teams, who are you? Who are you? Are you actually the technical bench? Is your work to intervene? Is your work to interfere in how squads have been selected? So, so there is some outside forces in terms of uh, who should get selected in the national sevens team? I think I, I, it's not, I can't say categorically, but I always get the feeling, and it's the saddest thing in Kenya. Very many people are self-centered the clubs are self-centered so if it's queens queens wants their person there if it's impala impala wants their person there because of um marketing for lack of a better word i mean the exposure when you go abroad <laughs> but it's very unfortunate because if you go to for example new zealand if you go to new zealand everything from club level is focused on the all blacks and that's where kenya should be getting to everything in the clubs should be focused on the kenya simbas should be focused on the kenya shuja not thinking about my player should be there not thinking about selfish interests and sometimes you get the feeling that um, there's a hint of that in 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 the selection process yeah well, <laughs> yeah sure maybe away from that <laughs> debate <laughs> it's something that we can discuss later on and yeah. bring stakeholders of rugby including even the honchos of the sport to see uh, what can be done to you know uh, change uh, the dynamics of the sport but yeah. let's now talk about the Kenya Cup run. I think seven legs so far have been played. Several fixtures lined up this uh, particular weekend. I think Wanyore and Akuru RFC will be playing homeboys this yeah. particular afternoon. But what do you make of the run so far? How is the competition? And in your own assessment, do you think uh, it's a two-horse race, KCB, Cabras? <laughs> yeah, with, as we go, anything can happen. Uh, but so far, so good for Cabras and Philip Jalango. <laughs> he went there and he seems to have changed things. He got a coach from South Africa, foreign player three from South Africa, also the Ugandans, and um, uh, he's integrating with the Kenyan players. And they are playing uh, good rugby. And uh, I think that what Jalango has tried is tried to profile his players. We have, uh, we're having the the right the right players for the forwards and also the the, the backs and uh, integrating with the new skills <coughs> from the South African coach. So uh, we find that they are slightly a bit ahead. But uh, KCB have also been trained uh, in South Africa during the preseason, ready for Kenya Cup. Um, saw them play and they are a bit tricky. Uh, saw them play against uh, homeboys. They are they are a bit tricky and uh, they, they they'll give uh, homeboys a run. But so far so good. Homeboys stands uh, uh, the top team. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Cabra stands the top team so far the uh, the Kenya Cup. And also sponsors coming up. Uh, Bumper Sport uh, found that uh, at least clubs are playing and uh, we can 
pe people also be able to watch and uh, uh, players coming up and then we also see the sevens players who haven't traveled they are also going to join their teams seen all yet with impala in general with mwamba billy otieno uh, bill 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 the bill the kid is also with mwamba so probably the, <laughs> the game is going to be tough uh, but so far, the level of rugby has gone up. Especially when you look at the top eight teams, um, it's, uh, they, they are equally playing uh, nice rugby. Uh, but uh, the relegation zone also for the others. It's unfortunate that uh, Sylvia came from Stratman. <laughs> they are not doing well. <laughs> Leo is not doing good. <laughs> yeah, she's not <laughs> good. Uh, Stratman is not doing well. Uh, it, <laughs> so it, it, machine, it's yeah, it, finding it uh, tough. <laughs> I saw them play, machine play with Cabras. And uh, when you look at the forwards of Cabras, they are just on their own class. Yes. Yeah, what what has be been the problem of this I institutional uh, clubs? You know, Strathmore Leos, yes. Strathmore University, and Mean Machine. They got promoted last season to mm. top tier mm -hmm. for representing University of Nairobi. Black Blood, either yeah. of Kenyatta University, not doing very well. What has been the problem? Do you think it's high time now this university starts offering scholarships to deserving, uh, you know? players those guys who are passionate about rugby the talents outside there mm -hmm. so that you know they can compete you know effectively against other you know it's guns. good it's good you say that we've always had this discussion in the rugby circles and we say that w when we think about uh, the guys who we saw in high school playing rugby about 60 percent of them did not convert into club the best players that is did not convert into club rugby so number one i think that scholarship should be introduced that scholarship thing should be introduced uh, where the clubs actually come and say, you know what, For sp we'll give you sports scholarship. I know Strathmore was doing that at some point, but I think they should be doing that. Because the truth and the fact of the matter is that once these guys finish university, they're going to be poached by the top clubs. Uh, Elkins Musoni has just left Strathmore. Uh, he was poached by, uh, he was just bought out by Impala. Um, I think about... Bill Odiambo was also at Strathmore. Bill Odiambo was at Strathmore. Cyprian Kuto was at Strathmore. Um, Alex Olaba was at Strathmore. He left last year and went to Harlequins. So you end up losing your best players, especially Strathmore. They always raided their best players. I mean, <laughs> last year they raided Jinton Adongo, Tony O'Ward. Yes, They've lost Tony a hell lot of players. So um, it's, it's a catch-22 because one thing I can give you for a fact, Maxwell, is that these players are going to leave once they finish university. But what is Strathmore doing to make sure that when Cyprian Kuto leaves, when Alex Olaba leaves, when Alex, uh, Elkins Musonye leaves, there is an able enough player. Exactly, continuity. What 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 are they doing for that? And for me, by the way, let me tell you, I, everything boils down to money. Uh, sports is yes. money nowadays, and you need money to develop these structures. That's why I think our clubs should start looking at things from a commercial aspect. Guys should start thinking about running these clubs like a business. Because if you give people incentives, then definitely they're going to be staying with you. Or even if it's not that, there are very many players in the top teams, in the Harlequins, in the Cabras, in uh, Impala, who are actually university-going students. V top players who are university-going students. So why don't you make it attractive enough for them not to say, hey, I don't play for Queens now, I don't play for Impala now, let me stay at Strathmore. As I read, I'm actually playing rugby and I'm being rewarded for that. Wow. There was hope in these private institutions. When Black Blood and Mean Machine of Kenyatta University and University of Nairobi, respectively, were not performing very well uh, in top tier, that is Kenya Cup, there was hope in the institutions such as Strathmore and probably USIU to, uh, you know, reinvent the wheel in terms of uh, giving, you know, deserving people outside there a chance uh, to showcase what they are capable of doing most for rugby stars, especially coming from high schools. What has happened? Uh, so, you know, the, <coughs> the challenge has been uh, the institution, actually the management of the institution, uh, the way Maro has put it. Like uh, USIU, I had a very good player from high school and I wanted to send him to USIU. But see now, what I was told that the insurance, the cover, you see rugby is a contact game. It's only, it's only um, covers the students. If you are not a registered student, it won't, it won't be able to cover. So, so that's something, some of the clauses they are supposed to remove uh, from the, the universities so that uh, it can be able to attract other guys to come and make it uh, a club. Well, maybe their priorities are a little the different and they are paying much attention to academics rather than co-curricular. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, they don't have a separate budget for managing a club, but they all 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 the the games department, you know, wants to follow the budget, follow <laughs> the budget for the sport, and the sport is 
within the, the to manage the students. That's that I think that's the, the biggest challenge. But uh, we've seen them; they have uh, tried some of money to go to Kenya Cup, and um, just within one season they are back again to the nationwide <laughs> or the championship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. tough for them. Yeah. If, if you ask me, there's a unfortunately in Kenya there's a skewed um, perception that sports is a pastime, that yes. sports oh. is co-curricular yeah. uh, is a co-curricular pastime, and there's again a skewed perception that if somebody is playing sports, then you're not going to make anything of your life. Uh, I'd like to go on record and say that's actually wrong. Because if you look at other countries, if you look at the most successful business men and women in the Western countries, a large number of them are actually sports people, right? I like the fact that in the US, especially in things like basketball, back in the day, nowadays they don't do it. You had to to be in college, what they call college, university, you know, to get the degrees. So I think our universities should change the way of looking at things. They should actually first promote that issue of sports scholarships because there are very many guys who are excellent sports people, but they don't have the capacity to be in these universities. So give them that chance. When they do that degree, what does that help them? It helps them form a basis for their next life when they are done playing sports because the truth and the fact of the matter is that the shelf life of a sportsman is between 18 and 35 years at 35 you're still pretty young so you have a hell lot to do with your life it's what you do in that university that's going to help you post those are the programs i wish the kenya rugby union would be introducing to train these players for life after rugby right to show them that okay fine there's university there's that we're talking about the scholarship there's university then you go into club the club if you look at professional clubs in the in new zealand in in england you know they only they have one day focused on life after rugby you chart out your path whether you're going to go into marketing whether you're going to go into business whether you're going to go into construction they chart out your path for life after rugby so that the money you earn in your career playing days then helps you for your life after rugby so i think the biggest issue here is the fact that in Kenya we still look at sports as a pastime. We need to start looking at sports as a business. We need to start looking at sports as a platform for people from nowhere to actually get a chance to be something. A few SMS is coming in. Felix Akaranga watching from High Rise is saying that he agrees with Ngarwa because at Kenya Rugby Union there seems to be a leadership vacuum and those are uh, those at the helm are not doing good for the sport and it's about selfish interest. Then Felix Okura is asking, ask Malimu, when are we seeing uh, Comras RFC into limelight as far as as far as participation in Kenya Cup yeah. is concerned? Yeah, when, sure. <laughs> when are we seeing Comras <laughs> in Kenya Cup? Yeah, yeah soon uh, we, currently we are nationwide and we are... And I've been told nationwide is quite tough yeah it's oh, tough yeah, it is. coming out of nationwide there are 75 teams playing nationwide in kenya now and they created the second tire that's the championship so after the championship we have one more tire to go and then we climb up now to kenya cup so it might take uh, probably two years now to make it to kenya cup but it's not easy also going to kenya cup we need to prepare we need to profile the players we need to have the right um, setup uh, special training for the players you don't just go to kenya cup and then you come back so if going to kenya cup i must be ready yeah uh, for kenya cup you see now like homeboys uh, when they were making to Kenya Cup, they tried to stay a year in ESS because they felt it's not our time to go to Kenya Cup. But when they made now to Kenya Cup, they stay there up to now. They have maintained their Kenya Cup slot. So we need to prepare well. <laughs> uh, but okay, as the issue of scholarship also start from the high school. But uh, uh, scholarship, but we've seen some some few schools have given scholarship to the players and they have done well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen the likes of playing now, like Johnson Olindi, mm -hmm. got in scholarship at Tampa yeah. Hill. Went very, to, very good player, yeah, by also the way. to Laser uh, because of the scholarship. But see now the biggest challenge uh, with the Kenyan universities, mo quite a, most of them are private, uh, uh, public universities. And where's the budget for the government keeps to these uh, 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 public universities? <laughs> Where will they get that extra cash when the lecturers want to strike uh, the, the issue with the salary? Malimu, so the, money, <laughs> the money is there. The money is there. It's yeah. just this notion that, like we are saying, yeah. people don't look at... I was being told a story about... Um, in the 90s and yeah. the 2000s early 2000s sure it used to be so bad for the guys used to play for mean machine 
the lecturers used to fail them because of them playing for mean machine <laughs> to the point they used, wrong, to, they used to them deliberately yes they used to tell um yeah. the, the guy who used to write a nation called pandit the panther yeah. they yes. used to tell him don't include our names Eric Odanga? yes don't include our names in the articles because if the lecturers see we are going to be failed what yes. and there are very many lecturers who have that parochial vision mm. to date mm. they look at you just because you're a sports person they think you're little just because you're a rugby player, just yeah. because you're a football player, just because you're a basketball player, yeah. Yeah. you're little. That you should be focusing on school. Granted, yes, you should be focusing on school. Yeah. Yeah. But very many of these guys can actually make a living off these sports. Oh, yeah. How many guys have had sports open up the doors for them? If you look at football, yeah. Dennis Oliech, Victor Anyama, McDonald Marigas. Yes. Yeah. If you look at rugby, Collins Injera, William Baka, mm. you know, Chisanga, how, okay. Chisanga yeah. Joshua Chisanga. Yes. How many guys have had sports open up the doors for them? Mm -hmm. We need to start looking at it oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, he talks about, he's just said, in nationwide, there are 75 teams. Yeah. Nationwide. Mm. Alone. Yeah. We, we, come on, this thing is big. Yeah. We need to start, we need to start focusing on making sports more than the way we look at it. Whether it's drilling in our parents, that you can actually be something and by the way if you look at the most successful athletes in this country their parents actually let them if you look at their stories yeah their parents actually let them like yeah, yeah. they've yeah. contributed to their yeah. success they're supported so you know with we yeah. talk to the parents we talk to the government we talk to the universities we need to put a bit more focus on sports sports can actually make quality persons in life frederick Cusino is watching from bungoma he's saying uh calling it a spade a spade no sugar Coating, then he disagrees with Malim saying that uh, you can't be proud of your country. <laughs> I can't be patriotic yet. I will sleep hungry <laughs> at home. I don't know. Plenty, plenty of uh, dynamics as far as uh, playing for the country and patriotism yeah, yeah. is concerned. Okay, but, I think, I think, but I think, different I think, angles. <laughs> I think the, the guys don't understand that these guys are not going home empty handed. There's an appearance fee that uh, IRB gives, the what rugby gives for the players when they appear uh, in circuit. But what they are putting putting on is uh what the contract now Granted. and more so and more so yeah. when you look at most of these players they have played when the money was there and so the way you say it mm -hmm. we need some uh, kind of uh, seminars for them to invest to invest uh, granted yeah, but, yeah, but, but but also but also at the same time yeah. uh, look um and Benjamin Oimba and Lavina Sego were actually on air saying yes yeah. that and and by the way I do agree with them Remember, Benjamin and Lavin have played in the days when there was no money. Yeah, sure. And they've played in the days when there was money. Yeah. And these guys have actually sacrificed. Lavin Asego gave a story of how there's a time the union didn't have money yeah. and a director went and sat them down and told them, look, guys, we don't have money. Sure. This is the scenario. And the player said, you know what? Fine. In fact, this money you want to add for us, move it to the bonus. We are going to play. Yeah. So the issue is how the management is handling it. That is the problem. And look, Benjamin Naimba said, and by the way, I do agree with him. He said, these guys have done already a patriotic duty, playing the game, putting their bodies on the line. Yeah. How many people are not going to have better, good lives because of, rugby is a contact sport, yeah, as sure. you've said. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> They've put their bodies on the line. They're, they're patriotic. They are doing it. I feel that the country actually should be looking at them as these guys are doing a service for the country. They should be compensated for that. <laughs> as, as, as we wind up, plenty of opinions yeah. after the appointment of Paul Murunga to replace Innocent Simiu. Do you think he's got what it takes to uh, steer uh, uh, Sevens to another level? And in terms of performance, of course a lot has been said that, you know, the squads that have been named during the last legs, that now the national team has been converted into Homeboys Rugby Football Club because <laughs> he came from there. Not my opinion, but going by what has been written yeah. on media, on uh, blogs and even social media. Yeah. What do you make of that yourself? No, we have guys from KCB. <laughs> we have OG from KCB. We have uh, Eliam uh, Kichoi. Yeah, from KCB. We have guys from Queens. He's a Queens oh, guy. Oh, it's in, William uh, Reeves. <laughs> 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 no, but it's true. I mean, guys are actually saying yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, do you think? Do you yeah. think their complaints look, yeah, are yeah. justified? No, you see now. At the end of the day, what what Nani has done, uh, Pau, mm -hmm. is taken the best players, and we've seen the, these guys play the seven circuit, mm -hmm. and actually who won the seven circuit. So he's given those guys a chance to go and uh, play because if you are winning they won the local seven circuit which is actually tough to win the local seven circuit mm -hmm. and most of these guys participated so he felt that these are the right guys that can use us but now as we wait the rugby uh, the kenya rugby union to sort out the issue with the most experienced uh, players uh, but uh, all in all uh, 
players, we had new players who played like Samuel Ngede who went to Hamilton and mm-hmm. that they scored. And also we have Arthur Wiro in 2017, 2017 season yeah. and they made to the quarterfinals. So we hope uh, with the right mental mental uh, setup, with the way Pau was going to prepare these young guys, we can be able still to win probably uh, even against South Africa, against France and Scotland and make you to the cup quarters. And that will be a big achievement uh, for our team because at the end of the day, we finished number five in last year's um, uh, Hamilton uh, series. So it's about how Pau will pre- be able to prepare players. And uh, Kenya is a, a rugby seven playing nation. So we hope the guys will go up, uh, they'll be able to stand and say, fine, guys, let us play for our coach. And let us play for uh, the, let us play for the nation. Let's also play for our chairman. As, uh, uh, he, he tries to prepare uh, to exit. Uh, uh, no, I don't agree with playing for the chairman. That one I can <laughs> tell you for a fact. But I have my reservations about Pau as coach. Yes. Um, primarily because you see, innocence me, you, uh, there was a burst at Impala, 2015-2016, and he was largely behind it. Granted, uh, Pau has coached his team to the semifinals twice thrice homeboys uh, but i always ask the question with the kind of talent that he has power should actually be converting into titles i have my issues from the technical standpoint but you've given the man a chance i mean the same thing was being said about innocent simi when he was appointed yeah, yeah. not too many guys were confident in him we yeah. see what he's done we've got we've bugged our most points under innocent simi so uh let's give the man a chance he's been given a chance i only wish he could be given uh, this, the proper structures and the proper, proper support to actually help him uh, deliver on those results. I don't agree with Molimo on that issue of playing for the chairman as he's exiting <laughs> because the truth in the fact of the matter is that in the last two, three years, nothing has been done. Uh, let's call a spade a spade. Nothing has been done. We're in this situation because of uh, lack of leadership, for lack of a better word. We're in this situation where sponsors are not there because of lack of confidence. <laughs> in uh, in the union so i don't agree with that fact for, uh, no 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 come oh, on let's what, what let's I be saying, real. <laughs> sometime back kenya rugby was in a bad limelight we hope, I hope well, we also and it was not good for the game there was a lot of quarrel and uh, you guys really focus on the kenya rugby and every day you're saying the good good sport with uh, bad manners there you see now what used to happen but uh, coming in gangla and that uh, and uh, tano and omuela you see now they change their perception and uh, they just need to iron out a few things and improve but on that uh, still on Innocent Simi. Innocent Simi was eligible to apply for the, for, for the seventh coach, but he said no, it's enough. Uh, what he, did he, he did not submit his credentials. Yeah. And the credentials, question you should be asking yeah. is, why did he submit? That's why we should well, be asking. Let's be honest about yeah, it. Yeah. Innocent Simi did not submit his application yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the conditions that he was put through. Oh, sure. Because of, you know, we sit down, on, okay, fine, granted, we talk about, of course, his biggest issue was the brand Kenya thing. Oh, yeah. the, the taping of the, of the, of the sponsors. The and, um, you can say it was a bit overboard, but the, why don't we ask ourselves, why did the players do that? The money that was sent by Brand Kenya for yeah. the allowances, yeah. why wasn't it paid to them? Yeah. Why was it used to offset an overdraft? So the playing unit was sort of shortchanged. <laughs> I feel the, for them to get to that point, there's something that happened. And that's what we should be questioning. Yeah. For innocence in me to make the decisions he made, they were put in that light. They were put in that position by someone. In this case, the union. <laughs> so come on, guys. Let's let's well, let's, let's address they, the issue. <laughs> okay, they, they, <laughs> maybe, they need maybe, they, maybe. You know, they just to put uh, his house in order. And there have been issues with the players and uh, the management. I think at times the players overrule the management, and you've seen that. There's a time they receive ten million and the players share the money. You see now <laughs> because <laughs> because the truth of the fact of putting it uh, in Kenya rugby, like, so they can be able to improve the structure and the players get their share. But they just share the money and. Uh, but the, but, like the, but the truth in the fact of the matter is that the biggest stakeholders in the game of rugby is number one the players. Yeah. Number to the fans it's not the union the union is there to facilitate the oh, game yeah. let's yeah. let's be honest so the players are the ones who are supposed to get their dead use we have to wind up and before i let you guys go you are parting short submissions what do you see rugby in the next two years kenyan rugby both 15s and 7s um the way i see i see the bright future for the kenyan rugby but the bright the, it lies where when you see more young guys are playing rugby and i've seen um, g- young guys who've grown through the age of rugby like i've seen kevin aguambo who is finished high school the mvp amon omalwa from uh, east africa and uh, playing for mori mshiri they have now joined clubs so you see now these are young players who will be able to take over the mantle in the next level and uh, i'm happy that the coaches have identified them likes of uh, simon gadi best scrum of age grade scrum of uh, in the country so far play uh, Good coaches now, the big clubs are rushing for the signature of these young guys. So that tells us what? That uh, the Kenya rugby is bright and with 
the good leadership, the way Ngaro has said, uh, the Kenya Rugby Union uh, things will be able to run smoothly. Sponsors, I know, will come back. <laughs> and we need them. Come back. <laughs> Our my national team will do well. My parting, and my parting, my parting shot is one thing: Kenya needs to change the focus to 15s rugby. We need to move from this skewed perception that sevens is the main sport, because our rankings are determined by how the 15th team performs. Nowhere in this world is the seventh team higher than the 15th team. Only in Kenya, by the way. That's we need to change our focus to 15th rugby. 15th needs sevens need to be a feed, needs to be a feeder to 15th. Sevens is only used as an exhibition, according to World Rugby. It's a marketing platform for the game. But the real rugby is 15s. Only when we invest invest in 15s. People say 7s is cosmetic. It's cosmetic, exactly. <laughs> Only when you invest in 15s rugby is the stature of the game going to grow in this country? Is it going to attract sponsors? Is it going to attract the right kind of talent? And coaching, technical. Because I can tell you, you know, like, for example, if you break into the top 25 rank rankings, you're entitled to $200,000. 200,000 euros from world rugby. Yeah. If you break into top 20, which by the way, I think Kenya can, yeah. if we invest rightly, you're entitled to a million euros a year from world rugby. We don't get any money really from sevens, for sevens. Yeah. You see. So my parting shot is like, we need to get to the point, actually, we are at the point where we need to focus on 15s rugby. That is the only way rugby in this country is going to grow. Fantastic discussion, uh, quality conversation with two guys who form an integral part as far as Kenyan rugby is concerned. Malim Kombo, Chea Kombras, uh, RFC, then Ngarwa Kamuya, Sports Bandit at three uh, quarters podcast. By the way, what inspired you to come up with that? And has been the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, num so far. <laughs> number one was because, uh, like I've said, we wanted to change the perception of rugby in Kenya. We yes. wanted to invest, we wanted to tell guys 15 is the game. Number one. Number two, uh, we want to preach the issue of commercialization of sports. We want people to start looking at sports as a business. We want people to, we've been seeing people making noise about playing Kenyan music. I want to actually challenge people to go watch Kenyan sports. It is very embarrassing for somebody to be able to name the whole Arsenal team <laughs> and he can't name Gorma here. I think. Absolutely. And he can't name Harambe Stars. It is very embarrassing, if you ask me, for somebody to know the All Blacks team from 1 to 30, not even 23, 1 to 30, and you don't know the Kenya Simbas. You remind me of a complaint by uh, Nicholas Musonya, Secretary General of Sekafa, some time back, saying that, you know, the Sekafa is getting staged at Nyaya National Stadium, but, you know, Kenyan fans are watching uh, European football at the nearby joint at yes. the expense of going to the at field the expense of going to, to the field to Kenya take on you know exactly the so that's that's what we are trying to do we're trying to get guys focused on you know going to these games on the weekend whether it's rugby whether it's football go to these games ticket sales is one of the ways to commercialize sports go to these games support your team it is very embarrassing when you get out there and somebody asks you about your team and you don't know anything it is very embarrassing i also think that you can go to England, you can go to London and sit there in Highbury and talk about Arsenal. Then when you're asked about your local league, you don't know. It is very embarrassing. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for coming through. It's been a fantastic conversation, and we look doing this in our subsequent programs. Thanks for coming okay. through, and have a good afternoon. Thank, Thank you very much for having so us. Of course, this is the touchline on Y254. My name is Max Wasik. We've been talking about the state of rugby in the country, and we've addressed a lot of uh, aspects of the game. You know, the 7s, 15s. Narwa says that the future is 15s, and you know, Proper rugby is 15, sevens is cosmetics, but Malim still believes that, you know, Richard Omuela has played his role and he needs to be given a sort of a good send off, something that they don't read from the same script yeah. with Ngara. But how about you, double two one six two, starting with the word touch? Keep talking to us at Y254 channel at Wasike Maxwell, hashtag touchline Y254. Don't go away, stay tuned. Of course, the fan favorite segment, the fan zone, uh, is up next. I can see Web Tamangi alongside Ronald Okoth is also getting involved in terms of you know trying to push for the welfare of players player agents showing them on uh, matters media engagements and even teaching them on matters you know uh, legal aspects i don't know talk That's to me talk to me talk to me <laughs> Ron, Ronald, of course, now you need to link up with <laughs> Nara Kamuya for a discussion on how you need to do that better but don't go away of course peter check announced this retirement former chelsea and arsenal goalkeeper let's take a look at his heroic saves and times at Chelsea and Arsenal as well.